Hey, it's me, Francis, and uh, I am going to keep working on my uh, Bandcamp Friday stream um, project where I'm making some dungeon music out of stock plugins in Reaper. And today, I thought that it would be cool to try to make like a town theme, almost like a classic RPG town. Because uh, at the end of the day, what's um, what's dungeon music without town music as a sort of a dynamic? So um, let me go ahead and get started. I've already made some tracks in here. Each of these has an instance of resynth, and this one has an instance of a reverb. So um, I won't have to... Um, do a bunch of extra work to get everything set up and I've decided at this point that the whole EP is going to be the same type of style with um, stock plugins only in um, in Reaper so that'll save me a little bit of hassle and it will help me um, make this faster I think so I'm going to quickly share my uh, my links in here and uh, post them to, you know, Twitter and all of the all the fun places. I don't like doing that automatically. I think it's more fun to sort of just post it while I'm on live. Why not? I can sort of like oh god, the automatic live post to Facebook is horrible. Cool, it's good enough for me. All right, now to get started. So um, I want, for town music, I want it to sound kind of uh, nice and mellow. And um, I think that like the most mellow type of sound is like a, like a Rhodes electric piano kind of a, kind of a sound. So I think I'm gonna try to make a patch that's uh, vaguely similar to that um, as my starting point here. I'm gonna call this uh, E piano. And it's still gonna be resynth, but um, I'm going to give it a quick decay and a lower sustain volume to give it sort of like a, a pluck, like a hammered sound. So as a starting point, I think that um, just the straight up sine wave is going to be appropriate. And um, I think for this, though, I want to have a essentially synthesize sort of like a the key click separately. And to do that, I'm going to add an extra instance of resynth. And in this one, I'm going to tune it um, quite a bit higher, I think. Let's just go up an octave. And um, pull the sustain all the way out. And um, pull the decay even further down. So this one by itself sounds like this. And I think that might still be too much. Split the difference. Let's go to 60. That sounds pretty cool. Um, I'm going to give this a little bit of a release time as well. I kind of want that uh, little click to happen the same way, even if I just tap the key. And I'm going to give this one, um, I won't give this one a release time. Okay, and um, right now we've got this. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of uh, Monkey Island. Hello! Welcome, welcome to my stream. Um, and I think that what I want to do is... Um, give it that sort of uh, movement. I think that um, a lot of electric pianos will have like a tremolo. I think there's probably that in here. Yeah. Stock plugins only. It's kind of cool. Um, maybe a little bit faster. That's 
pretty cool with the stereo separation. I'm gonna make it less extreme as well. Let's go to minus four. That sounds more intense for some reason. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna feed that to my reverb. Um, and I'll just write this up. Um, that's uh, almost exactly what, I, what I'm looking for here. Sort of like a lo-fi, old-school video game, electric piano kind of a sound. Now I just need to figure out what I'm going to play on it. Um, and that's sort of the hard part here. Um, I want it to be very uh, relaxed sounding. And I feel like uh, pentatonic might be a good place to start with that. Pentatonic is when we have only five notes. Um, and the sort of classic pentatonic would be the just the black keys on the keyboard. And you could do that uh, on white keys as well, but it's you gotta skip a few of them. I think I might just try to do a, a two chord thing at first. Let's just see how that feels. Uh, nice relaxed tempo. I'll do 90. Um, and I'm just guessing there. I don't know if that's gonna work. All right. Um, and maybe just a two chord thing. I'll start with that and I'll probably change it more later. As a starting point, um, I'm relatively satisfied with that. There were a few places where I wouldn't have chosen the notes if I wasn't uh, improvising and trying to do something a little bit outside of um, the normal kind of like a more rich harmony that I tend to enjoy. Um, and that's fine though. I think that I'm gonna set my grid to, I'll leave it on eighth notes and Let's, uh, let's quantize it for now. See how that feels. I don't think I like this chord here. I think I want it to go there. Give it a slightly longer pause. Um, that syncopation might be a little bit extreme. Um, I like the idea of it, the concept is cool. 
Um, let's copy the, the pitch structure of that previous part though. <laughs> I actually like that. Um, I'm going to leave that in there for now. Again, I feel like it wants this, this entire note value rest. Okay, um, at this point, um, I'm not following the phrase length very well, which I think is good. I might want it to float around a little bit like that. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Um, I'm gonna add markers for myself because it's quite long. And, um, Let's at least make this match the rest of the phrases. And um, think about what each of these parts is doing. And then I can start thinking about what I want to add next. I'm already sort of imagining a reedy sound or a like flute type of a sound. Maybe a flute will be good. Flute. And I'm going to do this again, um, just with resynth. Uh, here I want to leave these uh, whole uh, whole quarter note rests as a sort of a um, consistent thing at the end of each phrase I think I want this to be a bit more resolved. Um, let's see how this feels. All right, um, I'm happy enough with that. So I'm going to start sound designing my flute here. Um, again, uh, I've covered flute patches uh, a few times in my videos, but I'll talk about it more uh essentially long attack um sort of a breathy sound right um i guess in this on and then uh with the tuning i'm going to adjust the tuning with a um, lfo and in reaper we can use this param button to go uh, parameter modulation and over here uh I can add an LFO to it, and that's going to do this ridiculous. <laughs> you almost have to push the button and enjoy the silliness for a second before making it a little bit more of a serious sound. I'm going to have it start in the middle, uh, centered, um, relatively fast speed, and um, the strength needs to be next to nothing. And I just want that... Um, I'm trying to replicate essentially the feel of uh, diaphragm vibrato, which is what you get when you sing. Um, and you get it when you play wind instruments as well. That sounds kind of nice already, and I think I'm going to leave it to that for now. Um, I'm going to feed it to the reverb though. Delicious, okay. Um, I think my next step is just going to be uh, to try to identify melodic content by improvising along with this original uh, part. So I'm just going to start playing it back and seeing if any notes um, sit nicely in any spot.
Okay, already liking that line. Let's just go for it. Um, so, something like this. <laughs> I totally forgot what I just played. Um, well, let's try again. I think I want to kill those notes and build something out of these. I missed my first one because I didn't. <laughs> I started the record uh, at the same time that I started playing it, so I just didn't give myself any time. I'm using Q to quantize that. That's the Q key on the keyboard by default. Um, and the reason I want it quantized is because I want it to be a, a bit more of like a, um, I don't know, <laughs> a little bit lifeless, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, and I do still want breaths. Um, I'm calling these pauses breaths. And um, essentially what I want there is um, a little bit closer, getting a little bit closer to the feel of an actual flute where you, if you're playing a wind instrument, you generally have to breathe and adding breaths creates sort of a, a humanness in the phrases. So let's listen to this real quick and see if it feels um, like a semblance of uh, a completed melody. couple of spots are a little bit weird, but um, I'll live with it for now and modify it later. I think I'm going to try duplicating that and seeing if um, something similar will work for the repeat. <laughs> I forgot about our little syncopation. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with that term, a syncopation is when you have a um, a note in your arrangement fall on a uh, on a beat that is not normally accented. So, I guess I skipped it already. piano sort of goes to the next note early. Let's see what happens if the flute joins. <laughs> uh, I'm going to add a little bit of flair, chromaticism. Um, we're going to just stay on that now. Cool. Um, on a decent track, off to the right start. Um, this uh, bothers me a little bit too. I think that this repeat shouldn't just start exactly the same way. And I think that it, it almost wants... Um, something slightly different. Let's hear that one. Uh, 
let's try that. <laughs> <laughs> um what rhythm is that that i'm thinking of you said a triplet maybe it's not um it might just be a straight up 16th note I'm liking that. Um, and I think that what I'm going to do next is loop that. And um, I want some type of a, almost like a bass sound. Um, but I kind of want it to sound a bit reedy. I'm going to call it uh, <laughs> bassoon. It's not a bassoon. I'm, um, as I keep saying, I am only going to use recent uh, for these instruments and try to demonstrate some of the <laughs> some of the lack of power and how uh, you can use that limitation to your advantage um, in, uh, in, your, in your ability to be creative. Something about um, limiting yourself is really helpful. But anyway, um, narrow pulse waves uh, remind me of reed instruments more than most other stuff. Um, <laughs> I like this filter. It's funny because I've got the real one over here, but we're not using that. We're using the Reaper Moog Purple. <laughs> Um, let's just hear this. Um, give this a quick attack and a decay. That's too much of a, um, I want to get this filter kind of quacky. Um, I ex uh, excuse me for playing these keys down here. My microphone's right over my uh, that register on the on the on this on the MIDI controller. <laughs> um, but I think what I need to do here is um, find a nice part uh, of the pulse width. And I want to give it a um, a sub. So I'm going to minus 1,200 cents. Um, 100 cents is one semitone, or one half step. Then from one key to the next key on a keyboard, from one fret to the next fret on a guitar or a bass guitar. So uh, 1,200 cents is one full octave. Um, and if I blend that in at minus 1,200 cents, you'll hear what happens. I guess sub. I'll try minus 2400. Ooh. You hear how that sort of hits your subs? I'm just going to go minus 1200. It's going to make it hit a little bit harder um, as a bass instrument. Um, and I think for this, I want to um, attach some type of um, envelope movement to the cutoff. Um, so every time I play a new note, we get sort of a, um, a a wash through the filter, a little quack. So to do that, I need to um, send an envelope to it. And I can do that with um, parameter modulation using an audio control signal. And uh, what I'm going to do here is... Um, it's pretty tricky. Um, once you s understand it, it makes sense, and you don't really need to understand it to use it. So I'm taking audio from one and two, which are the stereo channels uh, to which the audio of this track that's currently labeled bassoon, um, where that's going. So it's taking the, um, the signal from that, the audio signal from the track. You can see it happen right here when it takes the input. And essentially, um, the attack is how soon it does something 
Mm. You can see what's happening now that I've brought the attack down to zero. It's doing uh, essentially like a like a fast attack envelope thing to the filter. You can watch the cutoff. So I want something more like that. And I this is my starting point up here, the uh, baseline. That's actually doing more or less what I wanted to already, so uh, relatively painless. Um, and you know what? I, I actually do want this bassoon to have a bit of, um, it's not even slightly a bassoon. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rename this bass so I don't confuse anyone. <laughs> um, and I'm going to give this bass a little bit of reverb. Um, again, just clicking and dragging routing. And you don't want too much because you sort of take over. And uh, reverb with uh, reverb with low end is a little bit dicey sometimes. So I'm actually going to go in here and go in with a EQ, and I'm going to pull everything below. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's good. It still has tons of reverb, and it. it's just not overwhelming anymore. Okay, and. Um, I'm going to get my bass line uh, straight out of my uh, piano, whatever you want to call this thing. Um, so I'm just going to copy that MIDI item down, and I'm going to delete all this melodic content. Let's see how far down I can go. Um, something like this. And this is just right clicking and dragging to get those boxes. Um, that. When I found out you could do that in Reaper with a right click and drag and not have to change any settings, it was like, ooh, this is delightful. I love it. I love that workflow. Okay, so let's just first of all see if these notes are low enough. Hello, Ray Day. It's going great. How's it going with you? Okay, right off the bat, this is just way too high. Or too low, actually. <laughs> um, Give us more consistent volume. Uh, if all of your MIDI items, um, or MIDI notes in an item are selected, you can just sort of drag across with your mouse. And I like doing that because you can create a consistent um, uh, velocity without having each note be the same exact velocity. Cool. Um, I think I might actually pull these high ones down an octave. I think that maybe an F sharp is more appropriate. Sebastian, um, when I'm writing this with pentatonic in mind, um, so I'm writing with um, essentially my my initial goal, um, the subtext of of writing this way was like, hey, if you take a simple patch or a piano and play only on the black keys, it sounds like you can play piano. <laughs> so I started there. Um, and then in my um, melodic content, I chose to include um, uh, a couple of extra notes. And I went to, uh, where did I go? Sort of a, the, sus, the sus4 here. I'm, I'm thinking like major F, F sharp, major pentatonic basically. But I gave it a, um, I gave it a B natural here. Um, so this is not even Aeolian, really. Uh, I, oh, you said Aeolian, Aeolian, yeah. Um, it's kind of Ionian, Aeolian. Uh, there's a little bit of chromaticism right here. And uh, I 
I like that type of chromaticism and the sort of uh, pastoral, like town theme kind of sounding songs. So um, that's, I guess, just a personal taste thing. Um, I think that oftentimes sticking to straight up, um, straight up modal music, Ionian or like uh, Mixolydian or something like that would would work uh, better in some cases and to some ears. But I really like the like. <laughs> that kind of stuff, like the little um, jazzy, bluesy, loungy kind of licks in the idea of like a town theme. But what's bothering me right now, the present, the present danger. Yeah, pentatonic with passing tones, I think is a great way of thinking of this. Um, <laughs> this filter thing's bugging me. In context, it bugs me. Um, I think it might be too loud. It might be... Um, taking too long. That's a little bit cooler. Um, yeah, I think I can tolerate this. notes could do with a little bit of release on the synth, I think. Does it need another part is the next big question. Um, that, I just did a custom action. I hit, um, uh, there was, I hit control shift alt D. I have set to <laughs> delete all markers. I tend to just bog my tracks up with these things sometimes. I'll use them for all kinds of purposes. And um, in your action list in Reaper, um, you can find actions like um, delete all markers. That's probably an action, right? That's what it's called, yeah. So I add that to whatever you want. And if you just find the action you want, you can usually just search for them, like, I don't know, um, set track color, something like that. And there's all these actions associated with that. So track selected tracks to black, for example. And if I wanted to, I could take this and run that action, and it's going to make those tracks black, right? Um, and um, if you wanted to, you can take these actions, and you can add them to a keyboard shortcut. So that's what I was doing there. Um, so... In my case, that particular action is key to four keys on my keyboard put together, which is kind of ridiculous, but uh, yeah, that is what it is. Um, yeah, so actually, um, that's a great question. Um, normally, I think I actually would put something like a, um, like a, a plucked string, like a real live instrument in a, in a track like this, and I'm actually thinking of doing a video series on like... Um, like VGM type stuff or um, dungeon synth type stuff that is not synth. Um, like using an accordion for pads and using a plucked guitar or a mandolin for the um, the melody sounds and a real flute, things like that. And what it's like to record with real instruments instead. But um, in the context of this one, this particular project um, as a... Um, I feel pretentious calling it an artistic limitation, but in this case it, it is. Um, and I've made the decision to only use this default Reaper synth as my sound source in this uh, EP that I'm creating. And I'm trying to recreate this EP by um, next Friday. So um, the more limitations I have, the faster I can work, the easier, the easier it is to finish. Um, but yeah, normally I would uh, consider putting um, a real acoustic instrument um, or some type of uh, sampler. Like um, I use Contact a lot for sampling and I, I use this on uh, Mellotron um, for certain types of sounds as well but in this case I'm 
it's just the limitation, our, a completely arbitrary limitation I've decided on for this project. So that's really what's going on here. Um, but having said that, maybe I'll try making something that's a little bit more guitar-like. Uh, it's not going to sound anything like a guitar, but um, say la V, right? Um, and I'm going to use a square, quick attack decay, no sustain. Um, I'm going to call this plux. And um, really horrible on that. Um, and I'll use, you know what, I actually will use re-EQ. Let's use that. What a horrible sound. And this is not going to end up sounding anything like a guitar. Um, and I've already given up on making it do that. But um, thanks for coming by. Um, and hopefully I don't need luck making it through the village. But uh, maybe I'll put some scary monsters in here. And then I will need luck because I am unarmed. I have nothing but my pocket knife. <laughs> and um, I don't even have a glass of whiskey. So... Um, Hopefully the campfire will be enough. <laughs> a warm blanket. Is this comfy synth? I hope not, I think. I don't know. I don't know how, what I hope about that. Mixed feelings about genre tags in general. <laughs> um, I think that I'm going to, oops, not that. Add a second sound source here. Kind of a cool sound, actually. Um, hmm. Give it some. I'm going to do this the opposite here that I did with the bass and give this a little octave up, 1200 cents up. Um, I kind of like it. And the tuning here, I want to give it, uh, let's see if I can do this. I've never tried this before, so I'll stop if I start wasting time. Um, maybe if the, if the, if the viewer count goes down by enough, <laughs> I'll, um, <laughs> I'll uh, stop. So, oh God, it just went up. So I better do this quick. So I think what I want to do here is, um, Well, essentially, when you pluck a string, um, your pitch is going to go down a little bit, uh, right? Because um, when you bend the string out with your plectrum, or whatever it is you're plucking it with, whether you pluck it with your finger or a guitar pick, you're going to have, um, you're going to stretch the string out, and that's going to increase the pitch, right? Because when you tighten your tuning pegs, you're going to um, increase the pitch. So by nature, plucking a string is going to actually um, make it go sharp a little bit. And uh, over time, as the string's vibration um, slows down, or lessens in the amplitude, rather, um, you're going to uh, get not only less volume, but you're going to get um, a slightly lower pitch. And I was thinking it might be cool to replicate that. Usually you could do that with like a, like a one-shot envelope. Um, so I guess I need a negative direction. Quick attack, channels one, two, and I want it to hit the pitch um, starting at zero, or maybe a little bit above zero, 12 cents, let's try that. And uh, what happens now? It's going the wrong way. Okay. Oh, 
I'm on the wrong instance of resent, aren't I? Um, I don't want that. I want this. I want this tune to zero, and I want the first instance of resynth doing this. Um, because the pluck is the thing that I want to change the pitch, not, I don't really want that, uh, the sine wave to do that. Okay, and now let's watch what happens. If I go... What have I forgotten to do? <laughs> um, so I'm not really seeing what's going on here. Huh. I'm sure I'm missing something really obvious, but um, I think for the sake of being on live stream, I'm not going to uh, mess with it. This would be pretty easy to do on a, a regular synth, and me challenging myself to do this isn't going to really do anyone any favors, because <laughs> um, I'm sure very few people actually want to try to do this, this uh, specific thing. It's still bothering me a little bit that I'm not thinking of how to do it or figuring out why it's not working. But at the end of the day, let's not worry about it and come up with a part that goes with this song. Um, and I think what I want to do here is to sort of play along with the track and improvise a new part um, and see if that feels good. So my first reaction is that it feels unnecessary. This very well could be um, that sound. Um, and it's a little bit aggressive sounding. It's um, I'm not really enjoying this. <laughs> I'm just gonna get rid of it and get rid of that track and not tempt myself. And I'll come up with a new part for this electric piano patch. Um, and to do that, I'm gonna put pre-roll on before recording. And that was a right click on my metronome menu. <laughs> You'll notice that I didn't record on my track, so. Um, I'm going to change keys here, I think. <laughs> Is that too extreme of a choice? Uh, you tell me. Um, I actually don't know. I think my ears are starting to get a little bit fried. It's good to take a break every hour or so, and oh geez, we're only 45 minutes in, so I shouldn't need a break for another 15 minutes, but whatever. Um, let's hear that in context, because it's really hard to understand if a key change is going to be functional if you don't hear it um, in the context of quite a bit of the song. Um, oh, um, Rede, the, um this particular song I'm working on right now, is part of an EP that I am challenging myself to only use um, resynth. It's literally just the Reaper synth, this ugly thing right here. Uh, so all of these is just uh, sound designed basically. If you watch the recap of the video, you can see how I did that. I have a series also called um, Dungeon Synthesis on my channel that goes over essentially sound design with primitive synthesizers like this dinosaur over here. And uh, resynth is another similar thing that's even more primitive. Um, but anyway, I'm going to play this back and let's hear it. Mm -hmm. 
I think I like this. Um, there's one note that's questionable, but it's not questionable enough for me to delete it right away. I am, however, going to make a bass part. Um, um, and I slice those off. And also, if if anyone watches my videos or like watches these live streams and wants these sounds um i'd be more than happy to make you a preset in um in recent or one of the plugins i'm using i i don't um i don't think that's like that's not like a, a coveted secret of mine or anything like that um, i do do um some of that type of sound design professionally and so I do I do charge for complicated presets, but like if it's if it's like this flute sound for example, like you can have it. I'll stay on here, um, so you can just view exactly what I'm doing. Just leave it here for a second so that you can copy the settings exactly. Just pause the video. <laughs> but um, yeah, any of this stuff, um, I'm happy to make a preset for and send it to you. Just um, are there DMs on YouTube? I don't even know. Slide into the old DMs. Yeah. Um, this part, like, just needs to loop forever, I think. Um, I think this is pretty much my arrangement. It's town music, right? It doesn't need to be complicated. <sighs> Let's see how this feels. Um, and I'm going to arm the flute track so I can play along if I'm feeling it. Solo City, the album. I have a I have a solo on um, one of the other two tracks that I made for this, and I feel like it's just not <laughs> appropriate for um, the genre I'm going for. But at the end of the day, um, I have the outlook that um, you should just make something, and if you think it sounds cool, figure out what to call it later. Don't worry about like this ha is going to have to be a dungeon synth album, so I'm going to have to do that. Like if I finish this and it's not dungeon synth, that's fine. I'll just call it something else and release it anyway. Um, and I think that that's um, a lot of people mistake that for writer's block. Actually, um, they want to make something, they set out to make it, and then they fail to make exactly that thing they had in their head, and make the choice to not make something else instead. Um, and that's not always the case, but I do often see people um, essentially decide to make nothing um, instead of making something they didn't really feel like making. And I um, I would say that I personally stopped experiencing anything that I would call writer's block um, as soon as I started just making stuff I didn't like and making it anyway. Um, and now instead of feeling like I have writer's block, I get practice by making something that I don't show anyone. So, um, you know, life hacks. <laughs> um, Anyway, I think this needs some kind of a transition to get back to the home base here. That uh, I've gone to B flat major here, like, and I'm pretty much straight up, like in. Well, okay, maybe that's not straight up B flat major. That's uh, not even slightly B flat major. It's more like F major, right? Um, 
And if I'm an F, F major and going to F sharp major, that's why it sounds a little bit weird, a little bit of a problem, right? Um, and I think this last chord needs to go um, somewhere else then. Yeah, give it just like weirdness. Um, this last chord, I sort of decided it's going to be a C sharp chord. Just going hard with the. Um, Five one. Okay, and then these notes. Um, I don't like the register they're in. Um, I want them out of the way. Low notes. Okay, and then this is gonna have a counter melody. Uh, so, uh, the flute's gonna come in after a few notes. Let's see. Too soon. <laughs> Ruined everyone's day. And this part um, needs to be quantized, I think, just to give it the same type of feel as everything else. Um, let's see how that sounds. That might just be um, full of awkward choices yeah, it might be it might be cool I'm gonna make these a little bit shorter let's just get a feel for that too high here. It's too dramatic. Um, this feels like maybe an ending. Um, and this one feels like it just doesn't need to do this at all. I'm going to follow the same pattern. And 
that's feeling um, pretty like okay, I think. Um, and it's, gosh, it's already well over three minutes long. And um, I'm about at the end of the hour that I intended to do. So let's, um, let's listen to the whole thing and um, see how, uh, how we feel about it. And maybe I'll put the... I'm thinking about all kinds of stuff I could do here. I'm going to give it a little bit of a stereo feel here. Nothing much. I just want to give it like a stereo image. I think it's off to a great start, and I think that I don't want this thing to happen at the end, the extra chord. Give it a little bit more of a sense of... Um, not being weird. Oops. Cool. Okay, uh, that's all I'm going to work on uh, for tonight, and I think that um, I am going to keep working on this a few times. So I'll probably be doing a few lives uh, this week or next weekend or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'll be trying to get most of the work for this album done on live streams. 
um, just to show the whole process of, of doing an EP again. I know I just did that, but I feel like seeing different ways of doing the same thing over and over again is helpful. So um, I enjoy doing it on live and hopefully some of you enjoy watching it. Thanks for tuning in um, and I will see you next time.